it is indeed a matter of immense pride and honor to introduce mr r mulidharan mr r mulidharan sir is an advocate and a law professor sir is also a registered patent agent sir also work as a mediator earlier sir was heading a bangalore branch of krishna and torashtri associates until recently sir has started his own practice uh through a manu associates which is located at bangalore and chennai sir is an advocate registered patent agent sir holds a bachelor's degree in biology and chemistry sir has a master's degree in international constitutional law and sir has also represented india in the flip c jessup international law moot court competition which was held in washington subsequently sir has participated in many number of programs uh, on intellectual property which was organized by washington graduate school and uh, sir also attended various international seminars organized by international law commission uh, geneva switzerland sir has uh, earlier one of the founding members of national school of india bangalore and sir has worked for 4 years as a uh, as an assistant professor and also as a regular guest faculty in dansar prabhat sir has sir is also associated with iim bangalore national law school bangalore national law university jodhpur nlu gujarat and also the part of administrative staff of college of india and many other institutions sir has written many articles in national and international journals and uh, sir has uh, very much uh, dedicated himself in the uh, in spreading the literacy of ip and cyber legal crimes and also sir uh, uh, works as a patent uh, faculty in nalsar and also sir is associated with various pg diploma courses sir is a life member of bangalore mediation center and sir attends and acts as a resource person in professional improvement programs on ip environmental law and international trade law last but not the least sir is a teacher of professor bc vivekanandan sir professor bc vivekanandan himself has admitted that he has learned ip through sir so with this short uh, brief introduction sir i would like to hand over the screen to you over to you sir so before we start the class i would like the students to introduce themselves to sir so that it makes a communication easy yes puja okay can i begin okay i wish you can start anyone himanshu okay i need to be seeing my learners as i teach so those of you come on you know please do switch on your videos and it's all right if you do your own things as you are listening to my lecture it's not a problem actually i wanted to be a two way communication i would like to look at you speak okay more particularly i like to hear your responses you can either type it or draw my attention actually all right professor uh, amir thanks for the invitation and the kind words that you expressed about me as a teacher i would like to stick to the topic the topic for today's discussion is ip or skills of a legal professional in their interaction with small and medium entrepreneurs is that right professor amir that is the agenda which has been set out for me actually so uh, soon after you finish your law school all of you are llm students and uh, you have already had 5 years of legal education or 3 years of graduation 3 years of law and probably in the first year is it a one year llm or a two year llm course professor one year fine all right next year you are going to be an ipr professional in fact you are already an ipr professional okay you have enrolled for being lawyer the thing about uh, learning is 
two aspects in learning. One, having accurate, up-to-date, essential information on the topic. This is very important. This, we acquire it ourselves. Law schools, teachers in the law schools try to enlighten us with uh, what is the accurate, up-to-date knowledge on the topic. But the one I am going to focus on are, what are you going to do with your knowledge? In English language, there is a saying, proof of the pudding is when you eat it. Now, the knowledge is useful to the people and society if you are able to use your knowledge and bring useful results. Please don't think that lawyer's job is only to get the black marketeers, smugglers and drug addicts from the clutches of law. It is not. Lawyer's job is to get justice. Now, what do we as commercial lawyers, what do we have to learn? Number one, you should appreciate that 98% of the global trade today is being done under the aegis of World Intellectual Property Organization. I'm sorry, WTO, World Trade Organization. 98% of the global trade. If you look at the 1950 statistics, this 90%, 98% or not just about 70% it was. Now, we have realized today trade has got a very important role to play in ensuring third world development. Okay, trade has got a very important role to play. And uh, the next thing that you should appreciate is that WTO believes on the principle of competitive cost advantage. This is a very important thing I want you to know before I go into my discussion on essential skills on IPR as they deal with that. The next thing that you have to appreciate here is that WTO works on the principle of competitive cost advantage. What do you mean by that? You have to give a product. The product must meet international standards and uh, a product meeting international standard must be available at a cost which is lower than the global market prices. This is what we call as achieving economies of scales in business. Scaling is very very important. You know, uh, gone are the days when Lawyers want to join senior councils. Now lawyers want to join law firms. The reason is economies of scales. Okay. Now as you become a lawyer and you realize that uh, what do we do? What role I have? Okay. I always say that WTO which uh, has uh, established, you have to always remember that uh, if United Nations was the organization of 20th century, WTO is going to be the organization of 21st century. Okay. The merit about WTO is that WTO provides for compulsory dispute settlement mechanism. The biggest vice about international law is that the international law does not have an international legislature. It does not have an international executive. There is no international court having compulsory jurisdiction. WTO has changed all that. WTO provides for Compulsory Dispute Settlement Mechanism. So what makes WTO different is uh, WTO is an organization with teeth. There have been many cases where United States of America had been told by WTO that what you do is commercially incorrect 
not in accordance with international law meant your conduct so much so usa which was one of the greatest to propagandist which was one of the greatest to proponents you can say the founding fathers of wto now had even threatened to pull out of wto and instead establish its own bilateral trading regime with countries which they can manipulate the way so the point i am trying to impress upon here is that wto has brought about sovereign equality in global trade matters which is a very very important thing uh they it be the wto functions on the putting up sovereign equality on the other hand IMF World Bank Asian Development Bank all these organization work as uh, listed companies okay shareholding whoever has the share has the maximum number of votes they are going to decide WTO doesn't function like that now all this is still an introduction to you okay and the most important aspect of WTO trips agreement is that there is an international minimum standard in the protection of industrial property earlier there were a lot of differences on the quantum of ipr protection granted for india we did not before our 2000 regime we did not permit product patenting pharmaceutical drug food patents had only process patent and they had a very restricted 7 year term and uh, section 3 of the patent act provides a lot of exemptions where even though there is novelty utility non obviousness there is something called patentable subject matter what are not inventions even if you are uh, alleged invention fulfills novelty utility non obviousness if it doesn't meet section 3 criteria you will not get a patent but all this was really frowned upon anyway i will not go into the more of the theory part of it but let me go to the practical aspect of it one more fact and i am done with the introduction that fact is wto so far wto and gat If you have looked at uh, GATT, GATT is General Agreement on Trade and Tariff. The main object of GATT is to reduce the tariff level to the fifteen percent of the product cost. You know what was about hundred percent, two hundred percent tariff in two nineteen fifties. GATT managed to reduce it to fifteen percent of the value of the product, which is a very, very commendable achievement. This has removed substantial obstacles to international trade, and it is the success of the GATT which made the international community realize that we should not only focus on goods; we must also focus on trade in services. GATT main focus was. You know the distinction between a good and a service. Can anyone tell me? Pink man is not there. I am not able to see your names. Can anyone tell me the difference between when sale of goods act apply to a services transaction? I want you to think. I want an answer. Even if it is a wrong answer, it doesn't matter. Wrong answer to me is better than no answer. Uh, so goods are basically something which is physical and is in existence, whereas services are the services or the work that is partly physical. correct. Electricity is it a good? Electricity is it a good? It is. Yes, sir. How important is physicality to it? Can you physically, unless you put your hand in the socket, you are not going to feel electricity, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, good. I'm glad you responded. But the biggest difference is, uh, for example, you watch a movie. What do you get here? Nothing. You get a feeling, <laughs> a perception. 
You buy an ice cream, I know what I get. Okay. But very many times, what happens in modern trade is, services are given along with goods. For example, I buy a computer. The computer has got an invisible product called software. And the computer also, in the initial stages when it was introduced, it can be the training of the humans, you know, to handle the computer. And thereafter, the computer system has to be maintained. There will be a lot of bugs, protection against the hacking. You know, you need not just the good, which is a physical computer that stays in front of you, but also the accompanying software, training for the people to use the software in conjunction with the hardware to produce the best result, continuous maintenance, debugging, protection against uh, hacking. So, when a computer is given, a host of other services are also given along with the computer. When you tag a service to a good, then it also becomes a sale of good transaction. You understand? A software has been classified as a good. There is no physicality. You, you are only something which is a zero and one, you know, which is there in the computer. And if you see it, you cannot make any sense out of it actually. Okay. So the point I'm trying to tell you here is WTO's focus, GATT focus was on goods. More particularly, reduce the tariff to an acceptable 15% level of the product cost. WTO in the 1995 when it came, it started focusing more on trade in services. Services means hospitality. Ola, Uber, Zomato, Swiggy varieties, right? That's a service. They, they give you a good but the good doesn't belong to them. The good belongs to somebody else and that somebody else hires the service provider for the last mile connectivity of a delivery. Now when the trend becomes uh, very focused on services, IPR becomes very, very important. Okay. Now I think I have finished my introduction. Okay. I think I have done about 10 or 15 minutes for me to get into the topic, never mind actually. I think that since I am going to lecture with you again day after tomorrow, it's better that, you know, I, what do you call, familiarize myself with all of you and get yourself familiarized to me actually. It's very important for me in the teaching, okay. Now, look at India. The India today is not the India I grew up here. Okay. The, it's, a, it's a totally different India. I used to attend classes where about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the students will not wear chapels to the classes. Many of them could not have afforded it. And even the guys who could occasionally afford it he has been directed to leave the chapels outside the class and enter the class. You understand? Eh? That is how we all grew up. Now, today if I look at India, it is a far more, you know, confident, assertive India. What has taken place? Okay, third millennium has begun fairly well, notwithstanding the COVID. Okay, in the normal course, probably I would have visited your college. Because there is COVID and there is a lot of restriction about people moving around, I am seeing you online. That itself is a very big deal actually, okay. Uh, I am sure there are a lot of problems, connectivity, okay. Uh, see, uh, I have last class I insisted all my learners, hey, put on your video. And they said, sir, no connectivity and I am running short of data. You understand? I mean, I could appreciate the problem, but the, the point I'm trying to tell you here is, 
the india today is totally different from the india we all grew up now there are a lot of nice things about what has happened i don't dispute that i'm quite happy okay india till 1995 uh that was the time the man who made the big difference was p narasimha rao okay uh, he is the most unlikely hero and uh, i don't know how this man figures uh, in your uh, what do you call assessment of the makers of modern india and p narasimha rao did not uh, do it out of choice he did it out of compulsion today if you look at the newspaper pakistan has got debts to the tune of about 50 trillion pakistani rupees world bank has recently refused to release another installment india was in such a scenario in 1995 in fact state bank of india and reserve bank had to virtually move real gold in airplanes to london for them to get uh, foreign exchange released today due to covid sri lankan government was dead short of foreign exchange government of india said all right up to the tune of about 500 million we will extend you credit all this is in newspapers and you please be current on that actually okay what i am trying to tell you is up to 1990 we followed what is known as a mixed economy pattern mixed economy pattern mean private sector will definitely have a role okay but it is the indian public sector which will play a very important role in the provision of essential goods and services that is why air india which was actually a tata airline was taken over by government of india nationalized it and government tried to run it and the what the wto had told is it is not governed with government business to be in business government business is to govern business must be carried out by individuals individuals must make profit and the government should tax the turnover and the profit you know a government nowadays nobody cares how much money you make uh, each time you spend gst is taken you understand uh, you don't wait for you to make a profit and thereafter take something by way of income tax the uh, indirect taxes constitute good lot of our national kitty the direct taxes don't even constitute about 10 to 15% Now what we have done in 1995, started by P. Narasimha Rao, very effectively followed by his own Foreign Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and mercifully BJP government also did not reverse the policies. I must always say that the architect of the Indian liberalisation is Manmohan Singh. okay manmohan singh in an indirect way because at that time p narasimha rao was the prime minister and p narasimha rao did not do it out of choice he did out of compulsion you understand what i am saying and china was able to do it 15 years ahead of us if we had looked at the comparison between india and china in 1978 the economies were not very different you understand what i'm saying china had a marginal edge but by 1995 china's economy had become four times bigger than that of the india today china's economy is something like eight times bigger than the indian economy the reason is the growth of small and medium enterprises after 1995 we realized it is not government business to be in business business must be carried out by private entities okay if we had looked at united states even the biggest weapons they are not made by government they are made by private company government merely gives the standard and make sure that 
they get the value for money. That is what the government actually does. Now, what is the role that lawyers are going to have on development? Particularly the development of small and medium entrepreneurs. Now let me ask you a question. Is there any engineer in your group here? No. All are lawyers. As somebody I have seen a lot of uh, nowadays, I see in law schools people with engineering degrees taking up to law, isn't it? Uh, okay, don't worry and you do only the five year stream and therefore uh, you don't have several of them. Okay. How many of you have studied science up to plus two level? One, two, three, up to plus two level. Okay, that is that is good enough for me actually. Okay. Uh, the science that I remember is what I studied in pre-university or in SSLC. Thereafter, I became a lawyer, uh, but I am a technology lawyer, therefore I can't say I don't know science actually. Okay. Now, good. Uh, what is a small and medium enterprise? SME. That is there in the topic, right? I have to tell you, Microsoft, when it began, the first contract they had was making an office operating system for IBM. Okay. The first contract that Microsoft had, at that time it was not Microsoft, it was just Bill Gates. The Bill Gates was the only single person entity. Okay, he was a student in Harvard and uh, his father was a lawyer and, you know, he was trying to make codes and he realized the computers, you know, I have not even seen a computer at that point of time. I'm talking about 1980s, so 1970s. And uh, the computers have changed in a very, very big way. Uh, if you can Google and go to see the first computer made in the world, it was in 1948. And that computer is twice the size of this room. And it did most elementary calculations. But the technology has changed everything. Today, what is the biggest company in India? Any guess? What is the biggest company in India? What is the big, I'm expecting an answer from one of you. So it's Reliance. Reliance Madhumika, isn't it? That's your name, right? Why are you so hesitant to say that? Is that all? Can you name a big company in India? Because we are talking about small and medium enterprises. I want you to understand the distinction between a big business entity and a small business entity. How you as a lawyer going to do the things to make the small and medium business entity into a big business entity. Okay, Madhumita, you have said that Reliance is the company. Is it the only company in India? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. That's all? Mm -hmm. There are more. Tata. Tata, all right. Himanshi had said one more. Now let me see you in my screen. I see three more. Each one of you have to identify a big company in India. Two people have done. Three more have to do for me. Pinken goes away. Tell me a big company in India. You are all commercial lawyers, right? You want a placement in company or you are going to give legal aid? That's a nice ambition to have. Sir, so Okay, not too bad. Who said that? And three more I have to get, you know? So Wipro is a big company. Then? Huh? Speak loud here. I, I need a two-way communication. I hope I am communicating to all of you, right? 
Huh? It's not just one way. I'm just coming and you know, I beg that. I want to make sure that I communicate to you. That is why I ask you these questions actually. I have got three people have responded. One person said Wipro, one person said Tata, another person said, uh, what is that, Reliance? Are these the only three companies in India? This question I am asking only for me to make sure that you will understand the distinction between small and medium entrepreneurs and a big business entity. Yes, lady. Yeah, I want three, I mean, there are five, I could see five places, six places, and I got only three names of companies. Sir Mahindra. Which one? Speak loudly. Mahindra. Speak loud, tell me again. Sir Mahindra. Okay, yeah, take Mahindra, not too bad. Okay, good. Mahindra group would have been a better answer, but fair enough, good. Yes, somebody else. Somebody else. Huh? Yes, Kanika, you are giving me an answer. Sir, I was talking about ONGC. ONGC, and it's a very, very good. ONGC is a big company. But ONGC comes in the category of a government company. And I told you after 1995, we have given up this policy of government companies. And I also told you, China became a big economy only because the small and medium entrepreneurs played a very important role in making China what it is today. Okay, China by 2025 is expected to overtake US as the biggest economy in the world. This SME distinction is very important because this Monday also a class is going to be on uh, academic and SMEs actually, isn't it? Yes, I need some more. I got four. Uh, I need one more name from the person sitting on my uh, extra right corner here. I don't know who is that, but never mind. Yeah. Tell me, some name. Some company. Where you like to take a job. Urva, if you are having some issue, you can type in, in the chat box. We are not able to hear you. Okay, you can type in the chat box. Type it also. Okay, all right. Now, let me not waste any further time. Okay. Somebody said Reliance. Reliance started as a small and medium enterprise. You know what were they making? Vimal. Professor Amir Khan will remember it. <laughs> Today, Reliance does not make any textile at all. You know what is their business? Petrochemical. Somebody said Wipro. You know how did Wipro begin? Azim Premji, a great man, every day he is donating crores of rupees. Okay, Premji Foundation, Bill Gates and all are, what do you call? going into, in terms of philanthropy and charity, okay? Western India Oil Company, that is a, a Gujarati company, okay? ONGC is Tech Mahindra. Mahindra and Mahindra is one of the well-known industrial families. They have always been part of the big business. ONGC, it is actually a government monopoly. Uh, ONGC is another Air India. Well, ONGC is a very big company, very profitable company, listed company, uh, 2 rupee shares or selling something like 127 rupee in the stock market. Now, what I am trying to tell you here is that all the big business entities that you see today were originally small and medium enterprise. For example, Wipro. Okay. Uh, Wipro was a big shot in oil business, soap business under the Premji's father. But in computer business, they were startup. Okay. So many of these startups begin as small and medium entrepreneurs. 
If I am in India, I am in village, right? I grew up in a village here, okay? And uh, my father was an agriculturist. If I employ about 20 people, I am a big fellow. Am I not right, Professor Khan? <laughs> if I am able to give employment for 20 people, I am a big fellow. But in global business, which I say that, you know, which occurs on the basis of competitive cost advantage, okay? Economy of scale. Now, any company which is having, yeah, what do you call, employee strength of below 100, turnover may be in crores. If you are going to have an employee count of less than 100, you will come in the category of small and medium entrepreneur. Now, most of you, I don't know what your ambitions are. Some of you may become judges. Some of you may become administrators. Some of you may become teachers. Some of you may become lawyers. Now, but if you are going to work, there are a lot of Indian companies. SIPLA. Have you heard of it? SIPLA and Reddy Lab. Anyone from Hyderabad in the group? Have you heard of Reddy Lab? Arbindo Pharma. Bharat Biotech. Have you heard of it? Who is Bharat Biotech? Who is Bharat Biotech? Sir, what are they known for? Huh? Sir, they make Covaxin. Ah, they make the Covaxin. And it's a high technology product. Serum Institute of India. They make Covishield. Okay. Now, Serum Institute, uh, Pune Wale was a rich man and you go to Pune and you will find many of his buildings and he has a Rolls Royce. But for the serum business, he was very new. You understand? Uh, they, this is a process of acquisition, merger, conglomeration. So the point I'm trying to tell you here is that there are a lot of Indian companies which have, none of you mentioned about Wipro. I'm sorry, you mentioned about Wipro. Who is the competitor for Wipro in the Indian market? Infosys. Infosys. You must have heard about that. And uh, I will really wish they visit your college for the purpose of their recruitment. You should make them take note of you. <laughs> Otherwise they will not visit you. You understand what I am saying? Now, the best thing that I want you to appreciate here is if you go by international yardstick, which works on the important economic principle competitive cost advantage, economies of scale. This is going to be the Taraka Mantra of WTO. If you are going to give an international quality product at a local cost, you become the market leader. Today, India produces about 27% uh, of the global vaccine. So, we are the number one vaccine maker in the world. But uh, you are making 27% of the vaccine, but the value of the vaccine is only 17%. Do you understand the distinction? We are number one in production, but what we produce, uh, when you compare it with the price of, you know, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, these are the ones that are producing vaccines for uh, uh, Corona. When you compare it with their price, well, our prices are cheaper. Profitability is another. You understand what I am saying? Probably an organization like Bharat Biotech and the Serum Institute will have more profit per every rupee that they sell than Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson & Johnson because their costing is more. Their value is more. 
their sale price is more because their costing is more the profitability is more in the uh, small and medium entrepreneurs that operate out of the third world all right now there are a set of skills you need okay now let me assume that uh, how many of you are looking for a corporate job have you guys thought about what you are going to do after your llm talk to me here i'm not asking a question on law i'm asking a question on what do you guys want to do after you do your law what do you want to do silence you mean to say that you will want to do nothing and if i had asked my classmate she would have told me hey i'm going to get married and make babies and if i make this joke in the class today people will come and say what sir with all your progressiveness you are an mcp right i wouldn't be surprised if i don't get that reaction from all of you i'm asking you a question girls tell me what do you want to do you want to become a lawyer i asked you this question earlier you want to become a, a law teacher you want to become a judge you want to become a bureaucrat you want to be a legal aid worker there are a lot of options or a corporate employee or a job in government eh? nothing like that isn't it professor khan <laughs> That's, I, I did that actually. I began as a, an assistant professor in the National Law School. See, let me tell you now. The lawyers, if you look at uh, the role of a lawyer in an Indian corporate scenario, if you are a general counsel in a U.S. multinational company, have you heard of this position? general counsel this is one of the important uh, corporate designation you, you will get something like assistant general counsel or apprentice assistant in the general counsel's office that is a very entry level job okay in the american corporate hierarchy a general counsel is a very powerful fellow but in indian corporate hierarchy law department is hey we have to have one law department here that's all and the law department person will mostly be doing hr work and personal management related work but all that has changed in the last 20 years now every company is looking for a general counsel who is good in ipr so if you have the skills that could be a great job for you okay now what skills you should acquire now how many ipr are there quick answers i want because i my lectures have to be uh done depending on the level of understanding you show me i don't want to be speaking a lot of things that simply goes above our heads you know Uh, see approving faces and that's not what we are at actually okay i need to understand your knowledge communication expectation level so that i can match your uh, uh, you are our professor amir khan expectations of me as a teacher right unless i understand my target audience how do i communicate with you all right now let me go back uh, all companies need lawyers which have a good level of understanding of ipr how many iprs are there today tell me patent trademark copyright design that's all i missed out something geographical indicator huh plant varieties protection semiconductor chip trade secret right eight ipr you are talking about when i was a law student i had to study only four ipr now you guys have to study four more 
that makes your job actually more difficult. Now your first job is which one of the IPRs my company need? You are going to join an entity here. Okay. I think most of you have opted for IPR as a specialization also, right? Right? I, I, I think it's important that uh, uh, the universities have to live up to the expectations which is put on us by the society. You know, when you go out, the first thing I want you to do is, hey, there is eight IPR. Which one of the IPR is going to suit my client's needs most? That's the first thing. All right. Uh, so what you need to do is, you should know the distinction between patent, you should know the distinction between when to apply for patent, when to apply for trademark, when to apply for copyright, when to apply for uh, plant varieties protection, when to get semiconductor chip, what kind of confidentiality clauses that I will incorporate in my contract. How do I protect my trade secret? For patent, trademark, copyright, geographical indicator, there is a statute. When you are talking about trade secret and confidential information, there is no statute. Okay. So, you have to protect it only by a contract. So, what kind of contractual clauses that I should incorporate in a commercial contract for me to ensure effective protection of trade secrets and confidential information? That is the, that's the job you need to do. You know, it's not something that you can go and Google and say, what does Section 3 says? They are all of it, you will get it in the computer. But this you have to do. Make your own decision. Right? And, uh, all right. Now, first. First thing is, compartmental. Patent. What do you do? Patents are very important for technology business here. Whether it is information technology, patents are playing a very important role. Biotechnology, patents are playing a very important role. Pharmaceutical technology, patents are playing a very important role. Engineering and heavy goods industry, you don't have a metro in Chhattisgarh, right? Uh, you don't have a metro. Right? All of, where are you girls from? Which part of India? All in and around Chhattisgarh or all over India? Little more about yourself. Where are you girls from? Which part of India? Bhopal. Bhopal. There's no metro as yet, right? Uh, no metro as yet. Bhopal doesn't have a metro, right? Sir, it's underdevelopment. Underdevelopment. So okay. A uh, first thing when I saw a metro is, have you heard about something called a tunnel boring machine? For you to build a metro first, the tunnel boring machine has to come from China. So what I'm trying to tell you is, whether what you are in the area of Heavy technology good. Larson Turbro, Masagan Da, you know, Cochin Shipyard, Hindustan Aeronautical Limited. There are what do you call as the consumer industries, pharmaceutical industry, heavy industry. So your focus is going to depend on what type of industry you are in. If you are in high tech industry, Patent is a very crucial IPR. If you are a company like ITC, nobody mentioned that, right? What is the product of ITC that you remember other than cigarette? It's a class weight bottle. Yeah, classmate books. Ah, good, yeah, classmate books. They are good. Is there anything else? Very good. I'm glad you're giving me an answer. I'm happy you are communicating. That's all. What did you have for breakfast today? Huh? Tea 
The most important product of ITC today is Ashirvad Atta. Have you heard of? <laughs> With which you make your chapatis and rotis here. Sunbeam oil. Isn't it? Eh? Not just cigarettes. And you go for ITC, Gardenia, Melinia. They are in, what do you call, paper, Badrachalam board. As you said, classmate. So, if you are a consumer product driven industry trademark is important you understand what i am saying and if you are what do you call um, rajini khan sharuk khan okay satyajit ray mahua maitra you know her you know her huh? what is important for them copyright you understand? The, uh, there are eight IPR. Some IPR are particularly relevant for some industry. So you have to further classify. You know, the, what I always will tell most of you is that first skill that you must accumulate is there is eight IPR here. A decision what to apply for what product, which product, what IPR, patent, trademark, copyright, you know, uh, I have been uh, an IPR lawyer for a long time. There are non-IPR lawyers who will have IPR work and they will naturally like to do the case themselves and they would co-opt an IPR lawyer for them not to make mistakes in the profession. Very often, the first inquiry will come like this. Uh, Professor Murligaran, my client has got a very important uh, brand. I want to patent it. I used to tell him, man, you cannot patent a brand. You can only get a trademark. You understand? That means this lawyer doesn't know the distinction between patent and a trademark. You are having a brand, the protection for it is trademark. You cannot patent it. And uh, there is another news item I saw in Economic Time, which is a fairly reputed and well-known uh, business uh, thing. And in that Economic Time, they are saying, Govan Penny has been patented. What he meant actually? What he meant? Can go and go? Have you heard of Penny in Goa? May not be a nice thing to ask girls from Central India. What is Penny? No? Haven't you heard of Penny? Have you heard of Goa? <laughs> Penny is part of Goa in culture, yeah? Really, you girls don't know it? Okay. So it's a drink which is found in Goa. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Penny is an alcoholic liquor peculiar to Goa. Two types of alcoholic liquor. One is cashew penny, the other is coconut penny. Now, what the economic time fellow wanted to say, that reporter, junior cub reporter, what he wanted to say is, what protection they should take for this? Geographical, geographical indicator. So, go and when he has received a geographical indicator protection, and this man reports it as patented, which again shows he doesn't know the distinction between geographical indicator, and this is the first thing that you should learn is getting which IPR to what product or what IPR to which product. Okay. In this connection, I ask you to appreciate and take what is known as comprehensive approach for the protection of IPR. There are eight IPR here. Okay. 
फार्मा बायोटेक्नोलॉजी आईटी टेलीकम्युनिकेशन फेलोस देनी पेटेंट फास्ट मूविंग कंज्यूमर गुड्स देनी ट्रेडमार्क प्रोडक्ट्स हेलिंग फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर लोकेलिटी नीड अ जोग्राफिकल इंडिकेटर एंड द प्रोडक्ट्स हैविंग अ यूनिक शेप ओके दैट अपील टू द आई ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल्स सी फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई शो यू दिस पेन कैन यू आइडेंटिफाई आर यू सीइंग दिस पेन इन माय हैंड Can you identify which brand is it? No. Maybe if I was in a class, I would have come to you and showed this to you like that. <laughs> Do you know which product is it? If I were you, I would have given an answer. Can you look at this clip here? Oh, but who is that girl? Who is that? So, Kanika. Kanika. Okay, Kanika. Okay, good. So, how do you identify? You are finding the end of the clip is triangular. Am I right? So, you are able to say that this is a parker. This is covered by the design. You understand what I am saying? Okay. Now, when you buy a mobile phone, right? Do you know how to operate it? When you bought the first two phone, did you know? Even today, I am unable to operate most of my computers, iPad, phones, all that. I am very honest, actually. In fact, this class for me was set up by two of my colleagues, actually. You know, they set everything up and went away, actually. Okay. Uh, okay, the problem I'm trying to tell you here is, you, you know that if I am a company that uh, believes in this type of consumer good, the shape and size of the product, okay, that will be protected by law of design. And when you buy a washing machine, what do you ask for? You have not. Uh, How uh, you can wash your clothes in washing machine, right? How did you do it first time? I'm sure that most of you will say, "Why do I have to do it there? My mom is there who will take care of all that." You know, huh? right? And how do intelligent moms do that? You know, every company when it sells a product, they make a product manual. Am I not right? Have you heard of it? And that will be protected by which law? Which law? Which IPR? Are I need answers? <laughs> Unless you answer my question, that's why I told you, Professor Amir Khan, that when I want to take a class, I want. Uh, To see the face of my students, only two people, Pooja Malik and Nikita Sharma, I don't see actually. Okay, uh, the other people at least I'm seeing their faces. It's all right. The reason why I I want to understand how much of what I'm speaking is received by you. What is that? When I am talking one day, Mataram, whom do you remember here? Vande Mataram. Who do you remember? Huh? Who do you remember? Bakim Chandra Chatterjee. Wow, not at all bad, yeah. You said Bakim Chandra Chatterjee, super lady. I like that. Who else you remember? Professor Khan. Who else you remember when I say Vande Mataram? Here, Ramansh. Ah, correct. <laughs> Correct, Professor. Bakim Chandra Chatterjee went to jail for one day, Mataram, one day, Mataram, one day, Mataram, to the Ram Shubalam, huh? For saying all that, fellow, I had to spend uh, time in jail. But when A. R. Rahman did it, you know, he made millions of rupees, right? So, what is the important law here? 
What law? What IPR? Papa, good. Why well, I want you to come up there. It's all right you make a mistake. When you are asked a question, learn to communicate here. Yeah. Right, wrong doesn't matter. The more mistakes you make in a class is good for you. Because it is the responsibility of the teacher to correct you. And if we don't respond and very skillfully conceal your ignorance, we will remain ignorant and you know our skills are not going to get beyond a point. So the first thing I want you to appreciate is take a comprehensive approach for the protection of IPR. Now let me give you an illustration. All right. Do any of you have an ink pen today? Do you carry a pen to the class? No. How many of you are carrying a pen with you now? No one, you know? No one. No problem. In fact, sir, uh, in fact, some student wanted to bring a computer to the class. He said, instead of take, I'm talking about 20 years ago in National Law School. Many of the teachers don't know why. Why, man, you want to watch YouTube in my class, huh? said, sir, I put a word file and take down all your notes. And so much so, I used to tell my students, don't take any notes in my class. Listen to me and communicate with me. And what I try to say, try to write in your head. And what you are writing, communicate back to me. So that, you know, uh, we will know where we are heading. So what I am trying to tell you is, none of you are carrying a pen today, right? For coming to that class. Which is unthinkable when I was a yeah, student. And occasionally we might get caught for not having brought a pen to the class. Next question he will ask is, why did you come here? Come here to sleep in the class or what? Huh? Some tough teachers. I had very good teachers, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I am doing this part-time teaching. Good lord of my learning. I will attribute it to the fact that I learned things from good teachers. Okay. And someone will ask me an insulting question. You think your father will come and bring a pen to you to the class? And then he will give me his pen. Okay, take it down. No, but I, I, I know why. But why I am trying to tell you is the times have changed. Your father would have had an ink pen. You, what pen you use here today? Gel pen, ballpoint pen, jumping ball pen, micro tip pen. You understand what I'm? There are uh, uh, tixotropic ink. Have you heard of that? Actually, I'll tell you when I want to tell about a pen. There is a very interesting joke. And you know what? Pen, this is the writing point. There is a big technology, okay? This pen, in this smartphone, there will be about 200 patents. Photo, photo enhancement, voice editing, uh, picture uh, editing, uh, whatever, I don't know many of the functions it performs. This pen, if you are talking about, this ball pen tip has been subject matter of patent. And in this ball pen, I do this, the writing point comes out. I do this, the writing point goes up. You have a spring mechanism here. That will be a patent. And the ball pen has got an ink. Not the liquid ink, but a semi-solid ink. That will be a product patent. Now, ball pen works on the simple philosophy. If you keep something down like this, there is gravity. Isn't it? So the ink will flow. So when I press it, the ink flows on the paper and it dries. Suppose if you are in moon where there is no gravity, Will the ink flow? Will the ink flow? It will not. So the NASA had to invent a pen that will work in places where there is no gravity. They had a hermit. And one more thing is that, you know, 
When you write a pen, those days, you know, the ink will flow down sometimes extra. So there are something called a blotting paper. Have you heard of a blotting paper? Nowadays in North India, sweet shop use it for <laughs> giving more volume to burfi. Do you know that? Have you heard? Many of the burfis that you eat uh, in the sweet shop have good quality blotting paper. Cellulose. Okay, what I'm trying to tell you here is this one product pen, right? So you have a ball pen tip, which is a subject matter of a patent. You have a spring arrangement, which is a subject matter of a patent. And you have an ink, which is a subject matter of a patent. And uh, you have a yeah, clip which ends like an arrow, which is a subject matter of a design. So if we are talking about one product, I have already shown about three patents. And it has a name, Parker. That is a trademark. The clip has a distinct shape. That is a design. Sachin Tendulkar or Kangana Chaudhary or Ranawat, okay, whoever she is, okay, comes and gives an advertisement. She keeps the pen here and pulls it out, right? Huh? And uh, that is a copyright. You may have Sachin Tendulkar to advertise that. Kangana Ranawat to advertise that. And uh, you will come up with a jingle, right? Can you tell me a very famous advertising jingle that you remember of? Nothing. A good jingle. Have you heard of a character called Lalita Ji? Tone, it is not a jingle, but it is a sound like Britannia, sing, ding, ding. Okay. Yeah, I know what I'm trying to even. In fact, uh, I am not so much watching TV these days there, actually, you know. There, there are a lot of uh, one-liners that attract. For example, uh, in, have you heard, have heard something called ambush advertising? What is it? I, I could see you nodding the head, lady. Do Sir, give me an answer. Kanika, where are you from? Kanika Lahoti, right? If I, I get your name correct, yes? Kanika yes, Lakoti, yeah. Hmm. Tell me. Uh, sir, ambush, ambush advertising refers to situations where non-sponsored companies hmm. try to ambush the sponsored companies. Pretty good response, lady. I appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm finishing my class in a nice note. You gave me a right answer. I'll tell you what is it actually. I'll give you an illustration. World Cup cricket. Right? Coca-Cola was the official sponsor. But uh, official sponsor mean during the match only their advertisement the stadiums will not have the advertisements of the competitors and things like that. And at this point of time Indra Nui Pepsi came into Indian market. Coke went on advertising we are the official dinner uh, I mean soft drink sponsors for the World Cup cricket. And uh, you know what the Pepsi did? They asked Sachin Tendulkar to come and say nothing official about Pepsi. Okay. This is a classic case of ambush advertising. Pepsi will probably would have spent about a 10 million rupee or 2 crores of rupee for the advertising. But for getting the same advertising, uh, Coca-Cola had given 100 crores. You understand? You suddenly piggyback into the reputation of a bigger fellow. Now, for this kind of ambush advertising and all that, will also come under uh, copyright law, trademark law. You understand what I'm saying? There is a, an interface. Okay? So, the point I want you to appreciate here is when you become a legal advisor, I want you to take what is known as a comprehensive approach for the protection of intellectual property law. 
If there is any one lesson that I want you to learn from this lecture is this. When you say you will have to take a comprehensive approach for the protection of IPR, naturally you have to know what are the different IPR. I said about 8 IPR. Having understood that there are about 8 IPR, which IPR to choose for what product? And as I explained with reference to this pen, this pen has got a patent protection, trademark protection, design protection also, right, in the clip. So we, what you see as a one product, okay, now suppose I am going to give you tea. What tea? Chinese tea, Assam tea, Darjeeling tea, Nilgiri tea or the Vietnamese tea. In fact, uh, India is not a, tea is not endemic to India. Do you know that? Where did it come from? Tea, where did it come from? Yeah? originated in China and uh, British has introduced the concept. China, very good. You are right. Where did coffee come from? Brazil. Huh? Brazil. Somebody gave me an answer. Where did coffee come from? Who brought coffee to India? Africa. Who brought coffee to India? Any idea? Hey, this is a product we have been using. Right from that time, I'm glad you said Kanika. Kanika or who, the one below, whoever had said that tea came from China. Good. Where did coffee come from? Quiz, you know. This kind of quiz nobody asked, right? It came from Ethiopia. That's in Africa. And there is a very famous uh, Muslim peer by name Baba Budan. Have you heard of Baba Budan Hills? Yes. Sir. In Chikmagru. Yes, he brought coffee when he went for Hajj in 1700. For 100 years, coffee was grown as a wild crop. It was planted in the western gods of Chikmagru. And people, during the harvest season, go to the forest and collect the coffee berries. Only the British, only in 1900, Organized coffee plantations began in India. But you know which is the biggest uh, handler of coffee in the world today? Coffee originated in Ethiopia. Uh, somebody said some other country. What is that country? One of you said that. Brazil. Yes. Brazil is one of the important producers of coffee. India is also an important producer of coffee. You know which company is the market leader in coffee product? I am seeing you saying something and I am trying to think about it and give me an answer. Doesn't matter here. Yeah? At least whatever I am missing out, I will cover in my next class. I have one more class. Huh? Somebody said something? Which is the big coffee company in the world? Huh? I think you should speak loud here. Yeah. I don't want to drag words from your mouth here. Yeah. You must speak Nestle. in the class. Huh? India. Okay. Nestle is Nestle. Which company is the market leader in coffee related business? Starbucks. Starbucks. Nescape, yeah? How did you forget that? Nescape, Nestle. Food Speciality Limited. You North Indian girls don't drink so much of coffee, I think, you know. Haven't you heard of Cape Coffee Day? Haven't you seen those outlets? Barista? Starbucks? Haven't you heard these names? You know, why, you know why I am telling you? This explains the importance of IPR. Nestle is a Dutch company here. 
and they have got the in, in India they have a company called you know the Maggi noodles you know you know that you know they make that also actually in fact the people know Nestle today because they are the makers of Maggi noodles Nestle essentially began as a coffee company <laughs> then milk company then food company you understand what I'm saying so the point I'm trying to impress upon here is Kabi may have originated in Ethiopia. Today, Brazil and India are some of the biggest Kabi producers in the country. And when I am talking about Kabi related trademark, except Cape Kabi Day, everything is foreign. Isn't it? Nestle, Starbucks, okay. Then uh, there is uh, one more here. Uh, what is that? Anyway, so the point I am trying to impress upon here is in global trade, IPR is very, very crucial. And this IPR acquisition is a skill. Okay. What type of a skill it is? Uh, it is like this. You know, the man who had the maximum number of patents? Do you know anybody who had uh, applied for patent, got rich by patent? Can you tell me a very recent patent which got the owner a lot of money? Don't tell me Facebook and Zuckerberg. Have you heard of him, right? Heard of Zuckerberg, right? Yeah, well, what is his favorite IPR? His most favorite IPR is not patent, trade secret. Confidentiality. He hires people to work for him and when people work for him, he gets their IPR assigned and tells them, don't use it, don't disclose it. So, and IT company relays not only on patents and copyright, you know, uh, software comes in the category of literary work within the meaning of copyright law. But the most important IPR that helped Zuckerberg is confidential information and trade secret. Okay. So the point I'm trying to impress upon here is take a comprehensive approach for the protection of IPR, okay, and learn uh, which IPR for what product. This is the first line of your inquiry. The second, I ask you this question. Do you know the most successful patentee in the world. These are, I mean, if I'm going to hire you, quite possible, isn't it? Eh? Uh, may not many people have regretted working with me, I can tell you that much actually. Okay. Uh, if I'm going to hire you, I'm going to ask you questions here. Yeah? And uh, if I'm going to hire you, I have to pay you a wage. For me to decide how much I should pay you, I should know your skill, right? So unless you give me an answer, how do I go for this? So in my class, it's important that you people respond back. Doesn't matter that it is a, tell me the most famous patentee in the world. When I tell you who is the most famous cricketer, you will give me an answer, right? Your IPR LLMs, right? What is the most popular trademark in the country? Give me an answer. Can you tell me a very famous Indian trademark? Tell me, eh? not HNLU, right? HNLU is a trademark or what? Can they get trademark? Will they deserve one? <laughs> My friend Vivek could not hear this question. 
Tell me the most famous trademark in the country. Indian trademark. Can I give you a clue? Not at all bad. But is it an Indian trademark? Yes, it is. Tell me a good Indian trademark. Tata is an Iranian name, you know. Dorastrians come from Iran. So it's not exactly an Indian trademark. It is Indian today, about 700 years ago, 1300 years ago, it was Iranian. Right? Tell me an Indian trademark. Uh, sir, I would like to make a guess. Sir, could it be Patanjali, a pure Indian name? Oh, beautiful. Not at all bad. Instead of that, I would have said Amul. 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 You know, Gujarat revolution here made a lot of people rich. We watch a old feature movie called Mantan. Sham Benigal movie. Have you heard of this movie, Mantan? Watch it in YouTube. Huh? Lot of prosperity. Gujarati women today are empowered because they were sturdy women. They were rearing up great buffaloes. There was no technology to convert buffalo milk into milk powder. Amul did that. Today, you know who is the biggest producer of milk and dairy product in the world? Who? India. We produce something like 17% of the global milk production. And it was possible because of a single trademark called Amul. After Amul succeeded, you had Vijaya and you know, I am sure that you have a Nestle. Britannia. They are all into the Indian milk business. Indian milk business is a very big business. Okay. All right. Now the question back is patentee. Who is the best or most important patentee you have known of? Thomas Alva Edison. Have you heard of him? Yes, sir. He had something like 800 patents in his name. He made a lot of money also from patenting. And you know how we define the patent? Patent is a license to a lawsuit. What do you do if you have a patent? If someone infringes your patent, you can sue him. Would you like to sue anybody in your life here? Yeah? Most of us will say, no here. Yeah. I don't want to go behind a donkey or in front of a court. In both cases, I will get a nasty kick. In my language, there is a proverb that says, don't go behind a donkey or in front of a court. And in Canada, there is another proverb that says, the guy who goes to court and wins actually loses. And the guy who goes to court and loses is as bad as dead. It is with this attitude, we cannot take advantage of intellectual property. These are some of the commonly held myths. Uh, uh, IPR is a license to a lawsuit. That is how Thomas Alva Edison, the biggest innovator of our time, had described. But you should know that owning an IPR is like owning an elephant. How many of you have pets? How many of you like pets? Any of you have a dog? Cat? Yes. Monkey? Would you like an elephant here? Would you like an elephant <laughs> as a pet? Have you seen a baby elephant? So cute here actually. <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> but only thing is, when you get close to a baby elephant, make sure the mother is not there next to it. Okay, it can be pretty disastrous for you otherwise actually. A baby elephant is a wonderful thing actually. Hmm? But you would not have it as a pet. 
Okay, warning a patient is like warning an elephant. Who will warn an elephant here? If I am a king, okay, you know, Mysore Maharaja comes on the Dasara procession, right? Okay, he may like to have an elephant. Or any of you, your father's parents, a forest contractor, you know, in forest, logs are cut. There are no roads for your LCBs to go there and pick it. So if you are a forest coop cutter, okay, logger, elephant is a great investment. Do you understand what I am saying? Uh, I am not saying that you should not own elephant. If you own an elephant, you must be able to care for it. That calls for a lot of money. Because you are spending that money on the elephant, you must recover something from it. Otherwise, keeping an elephant is not economically worth it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we started the class 10 minutes late, which is not nice actually. All right, I take it. So I am finishing it 10 minutes late. Okay. As a teacher, I never believe in retaining my learners in the class beyond the stipulated time. Okay. Time is important for you and important for me as well. So, let us continue our lecture on Monday. Right, Professor Khan? Yes, sir. Okay. On Monday. I think I am done with that. It's only an hour and a half class. You know, I want to ask you a tart question. You have studied tart, isn't it? Okay. If a teacher is keeping the student in the class beyond the stipulated time, it happens, right? Is he guilty of false imprisonment here? Somebody tells no. Somebody think why not, right? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, five. I'm, I'm not able to see Nikita Sharma. Who is that? No, she's not present. Pooja Malik? Not present. Who's, uh, can you please tell me your names here so that I'll be able to identify my students? Okay, no problem. I told you that. Pooja Malik. Okay, good. I have seen you now. I could. I won't remember their faces. Okay. All right. What was my question? When a teacher, when a teacher keeps the students in class beyond the stipulated time, is he guilty of false imprisonment? False imprisonment, sir, but a wrongful restraint, maybe. Hey, give me an answer, yes or no. Huh? Don't make it like my class. <laughs> we speak a lot of things. Interesting, but at the end of it, blah, 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 everything goes out. <laughs> okay. According to Solomon, a teacher, at least at the graduate level, has some kind of thing called quasi-parental authority. Okay, it doesn't apply to a law student here. You are all about 21 years old. I am not claiming to be a quasi-parent to any of you. Okay, but if that student is below 18 years, I think a teacher has a quasi-parental authority. Okay, a detention of a person in place is justified either under express authority or implied authority. I have an express authority to engage you between 9 and 10.30. Beyond 10.30, I have no authority. So therefore, according to Winfield, the teacher is guilty of false imprisonment. But according to Solomon, have you heard of Winfield and Solomon on law of thought? Okay. So there are a lot of questions like that. Please remember, law is a very interesting thing. And all of you are justice workers. 
the biggest obstacle in India for justice is incompetent bar. People who are in the justice delivery process, I mean you, I include myself, I had Khan and I would put Vivek, everybody, we are all in the justice delivery process. And if we don't have the skill, people will not get justice. So acquire skills, all the very best, ask me questions. Okay, we will meet again day after tomorrow. Thank you, Professor Khan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will stay again. But in the next class, I want more participation. And let's begin at sure. 9. Okay. That's important. Okay. Yeah.